Good morning, folks. Aren't you excited to see me again? <laughs> I know I'm deluding myself when I say shit like that. Um, okay, so let's dive right on in here. Uh, yesterday, I spent a fair amount of time analyzing the meeting between Brendan Dassey and Mike O'Kelly. Oh, he of the blue ribbon. And, um, you know, I got about halfway through before I had to stop because I seriously just want to choke out this asshole. His techniques are just, they're ridiculous on so many levels. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of looking for my lip balm here. I always forget to make sure I've got everything I need before I start recording. Um, but I'm... Hold on a second. They never need anything from you until you are otherwise occupied. And then all of a sudden they're like, mommy, I'm starving to death. And I'm going, you just had breakfast. <laughs> okay. So I'm going through the Bre Brendan Dassey and Michael Kelly meeting um, directly after Brendan Dassey's uh, confession suppression meeting or hearing. And Some of the language that Michael Kelly uses really, really gets to me because there have been a lot of studies done, uh, you know, in the 80s and the 90s, there was a good amount of false confessions and it was discovered that it was from these uh, advanced interrogation techniques that they discovered, uh, you know, later on down the line that a lot of these confessions were false and they were coerced. And the, a lot of the cops didn't even know that they were coercing anybody. They thought they were doing as they were trained and they were, but they discovered that these particular types of techniques will often elicit a false confession. And, uh, you know, at really the only factor is steady pressure and length of time. You know, you can go at the smartest motherfucker on the on the planet for 16 hours straight and eventually he will crack. So the thing is, though, folks, is that in the early part of the new millennium, research came out that essentially quashed the usage of those particular techniques. And it is because um, there, that's a little bit better. <laughs> It's because they discovered that they were erroneous. They were actually uh, not helpful at all and that they were pretty much the equivalent of psychological torture. So most of those techniques were thrown out by the police. But Michael Kelly is using them here because the son of a bitch is not only 80 years behind the times, but, you know, I'm pretty sure that that was calculated on his part. So... Uh, at some point during the course of the interview, he tells Brendan, somebody is going to cooperate and tell the truth. I would rather it be you. So he's pretty much telling Brendan, no matter what, you're fucked. You know, somebody is going to tell us what we need to hear. And if it's not you, you're screwed. If it is you, you're screwed, but you're not going to be screwed as bad. You know, well, at least throw a sandwich at you and use some lube before we completely fuck you. Um, now, what I found interesting, though, is that in this transcript, and again, I'll leave the link at the bottom. In this transcript, Michael Kelly asks Brendan if Bobby was involved. Why would they ask if Bobby was involved? This is the first I have seen in any documentation, any suggestion that Bobby might be involved. Why? What are you getting at, O'Kelly? Quite frankly, you need to change your name. I'm fucking Irish and that's offensive to me, asshole. Um, then, O'Kelly tells Brendan, I have to unravel all of your family's history and ask the court to consider leniency based on that. Michael Kelly is a private investigator uh, hired by Kaczynski. 
He doesn't have any authority to ask the court anything. He doesn't have any authority in the court at all. At all. So that's a blatant lie. That's him blatantly fucking misleading Brendan. And yet somehow the shit that went down in that meeting, the results of it were allowed into court. What the fuck, judge? Um, he then tells Brendan, when your confession is in, truth or not. So pretty much right there, he's admitted that he knows that Brendan Dassey's confession is bullshit. When your confession is in, truth or not, there's nothing I can do to help you then. You just backpedaled and double talked and told this teenager that you know that his confession is erroneous and yet there is shit you can do to help him. There's shit you can do to help him anyway, but he doesn't know that. Now, Brendan, at some point during this, this interrogation, tells uh, Michael Kelly that he cut her hair and stabbed that he cut her hair in the house and stabbed her outside. This is completely different from pretty much every other fucking narrative that Brendan Dassey's given police so far. You can see him cracking under all of this pressure and he just keeps spewing out whatever he thinks will make these people go away. He then says, he then tells O'Kelly that she was alive in the garage and that she was screaming. Really? Because Blaine didn't hear shit. Bobby didn't hear shit. Barb didn't hear shit. Nobody heard a damn thing. And he even states that the garage door was open during all of this and nobody heard anything. How, how was that hole allowed to not be filled by the defense? Because I'm sorry, but if you're stabbing the ever loving shit out of me, I will be screaming so bad. Your eardrums will burst and you will be bleeding. The fuck, man? Why isn't anybody addressing the fact that nobody heard anything? Nobody heard the screams. Nobody heard the shot. Hold on a second, folks. Sorry. I got a three and a four-year-old in there. So, you know, the two-year-old fortunately has taken a nap. Otherwise, y'all would be hearing his impression of a pterodactyl. Um, now, Brendan says that he went over to... Uh, the trailer over to Steve Avery's house at eight o'clock in this statement. That's what he says. I thought he said that he went before Barb got home at five. And then he says that his mother was home at nine. Brendan Dassey then states that he was in the house at nine 30 that he talked to his mom who was at home. So this throws off Scott Taddock's statement that Barb was at his house at nine o'clock. What are you hiding, Scott? And then he went to bed. He just committed a rape and murder and he went to bed? Now, what really was interesting out of this whole, whole statement was Brendan Dassey keeps talking about cleaning up the blood. But at one point, his thinly constructed veneer cracks and he calls the blood the reddish black stuff. Come on, folks. It's not hard to like come along with me on this and realize that Brendan Dassey's entire confession is coerced because it was reddish black stuff. But come on, why would you not say blood? That's an interesting point. And the fact that he states that his mother was home, and that is corroborated by Blaine. That is corroborated by Blaine Dassey's statement and Bobby Dassey's statement. And yet, Scott Taddock's statement is that she went to his house and stayed until 11 or 11.30? There are holes here, folks, and I mean to fill them. We're going to figure this out together. Thank you all very, very much for watching and we'll see you next video.